Good morning and welcome to our service on this beautiful Sunday morning. You know, it was only one week ago today that we, we woke up to learn of some horrific events happening in our province. And so we gather this morning to be together in this way, as difficult as it is for us not to be physically together in our sanctuary, our place of worship and safety. As Easter people, we do still come together to worship and to give thanks to God and to seek God's spirit and wisdom. We all know that these tragic events have affected each of us deeply. We're hurting and we're grieving. And we have many questions. Yet, as people of faith, we know that it is God's light that pushes out darkness. That God's spirit of comfort and presence is with all of us and those who grieve. That it's God's love that overcomes hate. And that our Easter story tells us that death is not final, that in whatever forms it comes, there's new life, there's hope, and there's love. It may not feel like it now, but I have every confidence that as Nova Scotians and as people of faith, we will emerge strong and connected together and united as we journey through this very, very difficult time. You know, it's not slick Nova Scotia marketing that's given Nova Scotians the reputation of being people of love and of care, of neighborly and of being open, and indeed as people of faith. It's because we've been through difficult times before. Nothing as tragic as this, but certainly have had difficult times and have learned and found and know that it is through coming together, through care and compassion, through our resilience, and at the core, staying connected to what we know is true, that caring for each other, that being neighborly towards each other, and that being people of love and faith, is what endures. And so today we have prepared moments of special tribute and reflection as we take time to worship our living God. So thank you for being with us today. May God bless each of you. This morning we're going to sing our Be United Chorus, but we're not going to light our inclusivity candles and Christ candle as we normally do, we're simply going to share an image from our vigil this past week. So please join me in Be United. O oh, loving God, we gather on this morning with heavy hearts. Yet we feel compelled to be here. For, O oh God, we find strength in gathering together and connecting to one another and to your great spirit of love. And so today, especially, O oh God, we ask that you would be with us, that you would comfort us, and that you might help each of us stay open 
to your hope, to your light, to your truth, and to your peace. For we ask this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good morning. Um, I'm joined uh, by, uh, I guess, via Zoom uh, with Heather Jean Jordan, who is in Banff, Alberta right now. And actually, uh, you can see that Heather is in the bell tower of the Anglican Church there, where she's been uh, playing the bells uh, every day throughout the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, many of you will have seen on the news that uh, during this um, mass killing and tragedy here in Nova Scotia that, that Heather uh, felt compelled to, to climb the stairs and uh, to send out um, some love through the bells uh, to the people of, of Nova Scotia. So pleased to have you with us. Thank you for making some time, uh, Heather Jean, uh, to have this conversation today with me. Thank you for having me. Well, there has been a lot of attention. Um, you know, during this, uh, with with what you felt compelled to do, but maybe just for um, a way to to begin, and and I should share with folks that you have a, a family connection to Nova Scotia, so you have roots here, and it uh, holds a place in your heart for sure. Um, what what really compelled you, I guess, Heather, to to uh, to do what you did and to to play the bells? Well. Like everybody else, I was I was so shocked to hear the news, and it really hit me very hard. Even though I don't have a, a personal connection to anyone who was lost, Nova Scotia is so special. It's always held up in this very special light within my family. And for this to happen in Canada during this time is so heartbreaking. The bells are so powerful, so it just felt very natural, a natural way to reach out in a time when we can't actually reach out physically to one one another. Yeah, and I I know that you know. Um the bells is just sort of one thing you do musically, but what do you think the significance that is of the church bells themselves, uh, that, that choice as an instrument, I guess, uh, at this time? You know, they have a resonance. I mean, obviously, as a musical instrument, they have a resonance, but they somehow, they hit people in a very deep place. So many people say that they unlock feelings that they haven't been able to deal with, and the way that they carry, they're part of the scenery too. You know, they're part of the place. Um, and I think it's also important that I am not seen when I'm playing, unless it's through a, a, a live stream or something like that. Outside, it feels, it's, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than all of us, right? But somehow we all get to enjoy it together. It's a way to connect even though, you know, we're not together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, you know, obviously I, I work in a church and, um, you know, so for, for me, there's a lot of significance, of course. Um, but I think it's a lot wider than that. There's something, it's interesting, right? There's something about church bells. There's a, there's a simplicity in one sense to them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not that they're simple to play. Um, but they do ring well beyond the church. They ring throughout the town. And uh, I wonder if it almost, somewhere kind of deep within us, it, it calls us back to something. I think it is a very ancient calling for us. And definitely when I've been ringing the bells, it is people across all walks of life and creeds or beliefs who feel touched by the bells. And, you know, I don't only play um, sacred songs on them. I, I, you know, because it's so public, I, it's a part of the town in my, in my view. But of course, respectfully, I, I try to choose music. But, you know, we have a little fun. I've done Jurassic Park and we had some dinosaurs show up. But other than that, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about music, right, is that um, it, it can be used in so many ways and, and sure, you can have fun with it in this time, a solemn time, a tragic time, such as what we're all experiencing um, still in this, this time of grief in Nova Scotia. Um, you know, it's a sacred time as well. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it seems too, there's something about the bells, and I'm sure you've noticed this, in the streets of Banff is that when those church bells play, it causes people to stop, um, you know, to, to listen and to pause for a moment. And it's almost a, a way to call people collectively together and to remember Absolutely. that, you know, we're a community and we're part of something and not, not just 
kind of going about our individual our individual lives, so to speak. I think that's true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so, um, in in this case in particular, you uh, you shared Amazing Grace, which of course is an old familiar and comforting hymn, I think, to to many many people. Uh, but you also played Farewell to Nova Scotia. Yes, and, I did. <laughs> maybe say a little bit about why did you choose that particular uh, piece of music? Well, I think, you know, growing up with a mom who grew up in Nova Scotia, that was a, a song that we we knew at home and we're familiar with a lot of Nova Scotia music. But that piece in particular, I wasn't sure if it was right in the moment, but I actually had a Nova Scotian living in Banff reach out to me and say, would you be able to play that on the bells today? So amazingly, it fits on the bells. The bell, there are only 11 tones, so a lot of songs don't fit, but it does fit on the bells very beautifully. And I was so happy to be able to do that for her and for the other Nova Scotians living here and anyone who could get to hear it in the long run. It, yeah, it definitely was beautiful. In fact, later in our service, um, Lenny Gallant has shared with us his his version of Farewell to Nova Scotia, which uh, we'll be hearing a little later later on in the service. Um, well, Heather Jean, I want to thank you for, um, you know, for responding to that call or that stirring that you felt within yourself to, to, um, to share with you, with uh, us and with your community, the gift of music and, and to ring those bells. And, uh, I, I, you know, while we might not have heard them here, I think we certainly felt them. And in a deep, deep way, um, you know, many folks here are appreciative and connect with it. And, and just thank you for your expression of, of love, care, and concern uh, for, for the province of Nova Scotia in particular. So thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Me too. <laughs> Bye. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood there, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And the beginning, with Moses and all the prophets he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself, as they approached the village to which they were going, Je Jesus continued on, as if he were going further. But they urged, urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen, it has, and has appeared to Simon. The two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I'm wondering this morning if any of you have a place that you go. A place you go when you feel despair or, or lonely. A place where you might go when the world just doesn't seem to be going your way or the way we think it ought to. You know, there's times in our world, and we're experiencing that now, where it seems like nothing is sacred anymore. Some of us, maybe we go for a run or a jog. Or maybe some of us escape to our gardens. Others, maybe it's we got to clean the house or start baking up a storm. And I know for many of us, it's to go to church. It's to be in a sanctuary. I felt compelled, you know, during, during this tragedy and this crisis to come back here. You know, to be in the sanctuary. And for me, this is where I need to go. It's here or, or at the piano, losing myself in, in music, or coming into this place and just sitting and, and meditating, staring at the beautiful light shining through our stained glass, or looking to our beautifully lit cross behind me, maybe focusing on a candle or some of the hangings on our walls. And sometimes it's just to sit here and to be quiet, to be in God's presence. You know, we've just come through Easter, and it sure doesn't feel like that right now. And today we have our scripture story of the road to Emmaus. The two disciples are walking along the road, journeying towards Emmaus, a place of escape, a place to get out of town and, and just go try to be as they reflect and talk about what's happened. And we're told a stranger starts to walk with them, and, and later we learn it's Jesus, but they don't recognize him. And as he asks about them, they recount the story, not only that the women found his tomb empty and that he is risen, but in their disappointment that he didn't turn out to be the Messiah they thought, that he didn't deliver what they expected, and that instead he was crucified, and even though he's risen, We can't help feel that they're alone, they're dismayed as they walk along this road. You see, I think that's a common experience that we all have and we're particularly having right now. That we're on this road journeying full of grief and disappointment. And some of us might even hold questions. Where was God? Where is this risen Lord that we as followers speak of? How could this happen? How could this happen to so many wonderful, beautiful souls? Why is there this darkness at times in our world? I've often shared with you, and I want to share again today, that It's my belief that God is, was, and continues to be with each and every person that lost their life, their family, and their friends in this time of sorrow. 
that there isn't this God in the sky that wills bad things to happen. That it's not part of a divine plan and it's not meant to be. That we've been given free choice. That we have the ability to choose light and love over hate and darkness. That we choose our own responses and that God has given us his son and our scriptures and stories and people of faith and mentors and love and light in so many ways in our world, calling and drawing us to choose love every time. And, and we all, at times, turn away from that. Certainly not to the extent that it harms human life in this way. But that darkness does exist, and people do make those choices. But God is with us. And so, like the disciples walking on this path, we may not recognize it. We may not be able to see that in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our our anger, that Jesus walks with us. We're told in this story that they don't recognize him. And it's not until he does something very familiar where he breaks bread with them that they suddenly recognize who it is, that it's Jesus, and that he's gone in a fleeting moment. I believe that every time we experience, hear about an act of love, an act of compassion, we learn the stories of these individuals' lives and the ways that they shared their light with their families and with the world. That as our community grieves and reaches out to comfort those families and, and ourselves, for every tear that's dried, for every action that's taken, for every kindness offered, for every prayer that's lifted, Those are all moments when our hearts, like the disciples, are perhaps strangely warmed and we recognize that we are connecting and connected to the source of all life, the great spirit of love, God. In fact, the story tells us that in the midst of this walk, in the midst of this journey, we often don't recognize that that God is with us that it's often in retrospect. It's often when we look back and we see where God was walking with us, that we indeed weren't alone. So I want to share today, friends, that if you're like me and and are experiencing this feeling of, I'm not sure where God is all the time, or not certain that in each of these steps, as we journey through this tragedy together, that God is right beside my side. For it feels a lot of times like when I'm walking that road, wherever that Emmaus may be for us, that it is lonely. But friends, we know from our Easter story that God is alive, God's Spirit is present that we may not always see or recognize it, but that God indeed is with us. And so I encourage each of us to open our eyes and our hearts to see and to experience the love that still is in our world, that still surrounds each of us, to remember the light that each of these individuals shared, and to know deeply that God is with us, that God weeps with us as he does those who grieve. That God's great desire for us is to have life in abundance and in fullness, to experience happiness and joy, and to delight in in love and in God's Spirit. So when these acts of darkness enter into our world, especially in such tragic ways, we can't help but feel that the road may be long, that it may be dusty, and we may be alone. You know, I find great comfort in 
and hearing the expressions of love that many in our community are expressing to each other, the deep, genuine human desire that each of us have to try to make things better in some way for these grieving families and friends. I take hope in knowing that although I don't always see it, and we may not always know it, that God is with us and each time our hearts are strangely warmed. It tells us God is there. You know, many of us took great comfort after this tragic event at looking at the beautiful sunset that cast over the sky, remembering that saying we all heard as a child, pink sky at night, sailor's delight. Friends, God is with us. Just like the disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, they weren't alone, and neither are we. Let us stand strong together, united in God's great spirit of love. Maybe so. Amen. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean stuffs, will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? Dear Nova Scotian family, we are heaving a sigh and a wish for you. And the wish is that you find peace in the midst of this pain and that you know that your Gambian family and your Starfish family are thinking about you, we're praying for you, and we're sending you love. We are also redoubling our efforts so that we can bring more peace and more love in this world. We want you to know we're thinking about you, and we are there with you in spirit. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I came to Nova Scotia. It was the first time I left home, and I felt so loved and taken care of there. It is my second home. Last year I brought my family, my husband and kids, and they felt equally loved. So you are our family, you are in our thoughts and in our prayers. We love you, we're praying for you, and when this pandemic is over, we look forward to seeing you and being with you and sharing much love. We love you very much. Thank you and goodbye. Most holy and loving God, we gather together on this day, having experienced extreme grief and tragedy, that, O oh God, as we come together this day and unite with your spirit and one another, we can't help but feel grief and despair broken hearts for the communities and the families who have lost loved ones to such a tragic and dark act of violence. Oh God, it's especially difficult as we remain in isolation and can't be with one another in the normal ways that we so desire to offer our comfort and care. And, O oh God, on Friday, again in our Halifax region, we were scared as we learned of potential gun threats, relieved, O oh God, to find out that all was well. But, O oh God, we are scared and on edge, uncertain and afraid. And so at this time, we just ask that you be with all of us, O oh God, and that 
we might know the true light and love of your risen Son. And that like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we know we don't always recognize you with us, but know that you are, and know that you are also with all those who grieve as we pray for your spirit of comfort and your spirit of peace. O oh God, fill us with your love, with hope, and may we deeply know your peace as we give thanks that we have this community of faith to nurture and care for each of us as we offer our love to all Nova Scotians, to all of us who as people who grieve with story and song, who know a living and loving God, may your spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. For me, 
Will you ever heave a sigh or a wish Oh me Well, thank you for joining us. I'm glad that we were able to spend this time together, albeit online, and, and looking forward to when we can all gather as, as a community. I want to thank everyone who was part of working to make sure that this service came together, and you'll see their credits at the end. But more importantly, friends, I hope that each of you stay strong, connect with the great love that we know in God and and have faith and know that as we journey on this road to Emmaus that God is with us. So my friends may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and may you indeed know the wonderful blessing that you are and that others are to you. May it be so. Amen.